In order to improve your strength, flexibility, and balance with exercises, and you will need to understand the benefits of each exercise, its functions, and common mistakes and how to move in an optimal way. We're going to cover a dead bug exercise today. If you want to learn how to retrain your body and then movement safely and then effectively and then move better, subscribe to my channel and hit the bell to be notified when I post a new video every week. I am Taro Iwamoto. I am a Feldenkrais practitioner with my backgrounds in athletic training, physical therapy, martial arts, and the Feldenkrais method. I have helped many people like you overcome and then move beyond the pain and the limitations. Now it's your turn and let's dive in. Dead bug exercise stabilizes the spine and it stabilizes the flexors. And common mistake with this exercise is that they actually are not stabilizing the spine as they are performing this exercise. Destabilizing the neck is very common. And destabilizing the low back is very common too. And why is it important to stabilize the spine, stabilize the flexor? Is well, obviously, we have to use them in most of the functions that require being upright. So here is the exercise how the exercise looks like. So you're starting with the 1990 positions. Okay, hips, knees are bent 1990, and your arms reaching up towards the ceiling. And let me see if I can show you. So as you are extending one leg down. You don't have to go all the way down, but and then simultaneously, the opposite arm are going to move in overhead. And then they return together, starting point, and then you alternate, you change the legs and change the arms. So this is called dead bug exercise. When they do that, and because they don't know how and how to tell the position of their spine, and then they go to this one and they're not knowing whether they're stabilizing the spine or not. And oftentimes they overly strain the neck muscles because they may be lifting the head unconsciously as they're doing this. You really shouldn't be lifting your head. You're keeping your head and your neck neutral. If you feel like you are pulling your head and make sure you, if you need the support underneath your head and just to put a pillow, blanket or something underneath it so that you don't uh, use that. And make sure you don't hold your breath. This is another common mistake. As they engage and hold the breath and then excessively engage in the flexors and then they'll starting to pull the chest and the neck and that will strain the neck. Right? So pay attention to the contact of your spine, your head, your spine. Ideally, if you are stabilizing, engaging all those muscles evenly, and when you move your legs and arms, there's no change in the contact, and what, that's what you're looking for. So start in position, and bring attention to notice the contact of your back, from your pelvis up, your shoulders, and the head. If you're losing the stability, as the moving, the leg is moving down, and arm, opposite arm is moving up, if you're not stabilizing your spine, and then you end up in arching your low back, which means you're not engaging these muscles. So simply think about maintaining the same contact and keeping the entire back rather flat, but you're not really trying to push them down. Starting, so from this position, this puts your spine in more neutral positions and without changing the contact as you're moving your legs down. And that's all you need to do. And switch. Making sure that you're not holding your breath. Moving slowly, 
And how you progress that? If this is too difficult, you're not able to do it. So try not to extend your leg too far down because the further you extend your leg, because it is going to pull your spine into the extension more. And if you don't have enough stability, then you end up in arching your back and then stressing your low back. <laughs> so you may start with just a much smaller range and beginning to kick your leg down a little bit. And you can challenge yourself. And then how far can you go? You have to know your limit, your current limit. When do you start to lose your stability? And that's when you stop. Because at that point, the further you go, then the more destabilized you're going to be. Here. And you may notice the difference between one side and the other side. Maybe you do a lot better stabilizing yourself with one side than the other side. So know that there is a difference. But at least that way you can you know exactly how far you can go, which will change, right? But that is a progression. If that's still difficult, you can put one foot down on the ground. So that gives you more stability. And then with the, ops, with the one leg up in the air, and then you're doing extend that leg and then reaching the opposite arm overhead at the same time. And then work on a stability that way. Then eventually you'll be able to maintain that stability as you're going through the full range without straining your back, without straining your neck, and that's the goal. And then that will be translated to a better posture and better balance in upright position. If you want to improve your back pain, be sure to grab your free movement guide to pain-free back at the link below. Check out these videos. And if you like this video and hit that like button and be sure to subscribe and share with your friends, Comment below how helpful you found this video was. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next video. Happy mindful movement. Bye-bye.